Greetings, salutations, warmest wishes, and happy Hanukkah to you all. Uh, this lab that we're doing today, or going to be finishing up today, is the one we know as the Density Determination Lab. Sorry, the writing's kind of solemn, but this is just the only data table I had available to us. All right, so how are we going to finish up this lab today? Well, if you did the things I asked, all you should really have is nothing but a bunch of masses and a bunch of volumes. So some of these we're going to do in our head, and then some of them we're actually going to do on the calculation page. Uh, first thing, you should have had a mass of a cylinder and a mass of cylinder and water, which for some reason is recorded backwards on my data table. I will reverse with those arrows. But anyway, nonetheless, for me, I'm going to subtract the difference between those two lines, 107.15 minus 67.90. And that's going to be 39.25. Now, the one other thing that I need to do is find a density. Well, I'm going to go make a calculation page. Now, when you do this in a lab book, your calculation page should be on the back side of one of your pages. But anyway, I'm going to write down an equation. I'm going to do this in our chemistry style. I'm going to be using a row for my density. But anyway, density is equal to mass over volume. And in this case, for me, my mass was 39.25 grams. And my volume was 40 milliliters. Now, I don't like writing 40 milliliters, so I'm going to write centimeters cubed because that just looks much more official. So 39.25 divided by 40.0, 0 0.981 in sig figs for me, 0 0.981 grams per centimeter cubed. And this is what it would look like on my data, to, or on my calculations page. Uh, and on my, this sheet now, I could come back, 0.981. And I'm going to go and do a percent error, because water, distilled water, should be 0.997. So I'm going to go ahead, just write down percent error equation. Percent error is equal to E minus A. I may do percent error 15 times in the lab, but I'm going to at least have it written out the equation one time so that ever anybody looking over my lab knows exactly what this equation is so for me my experimental was 0 0.981 minus 0.997 notice this is absolute values over 0 0.997 so in my case let's see what I've got here I've got 0.981 minus 0.997 equals that divided by 0.997 is negative, oh, times 100. I almost forgot, times 100. So I've got one point, negative 1.6. So I'm going to drop the negative. And so my percent error is going to be 1.6%. So I'm going to do a little note on my this. I'm going to say this is for my distilled water. All right, and then likewise, I'm going to move down the list. Next thing, I'm going to have uh, metal rods. I'm going to take a look at those calculations next. All right, so for my metal rods, I'm going to look at my first one, and I had a piece of steel. So what was my density for steel? Well, once again, all I'm going to need is mass divided by volume. So for the metal rods... I'm not going to rewrite my equation because I've got the density equation right here for density. So the mass of my, I'm going to write a little steel here. And the mass of my steel rod was 25.59 divided by a volume of 3.8 centimeters cubed. So I'm going to divide those two out. 25.59 divided by 3.8. And that's, I've got 6.73. And sig figs, I should only be 6.7 grams per centimeter cubed. I should not have made that big bloppy spot right there. But anyway, that's my bad. So there's one calculation. Now, you should continue, and you should have, on the back of your page, you should have one of these for brass. You should have one of these calculations for aluminum. And you should also have one of these calculations. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Aluminum, brass, steel, oh yeah, copper. You should also have one of these calculations for a copper. So you should have four of these calculations. 
Now, if you were good, you would kind of work this out on the page where you had room because you should also have 4% errors down that page. You should have a percent error calculation for each one of these rods. Now, for me, my steel was 6.7, so I'm going to write that down under calculated. The actual density of that steel is supposed to be 7.6, so I didn't do very good on this one. But I can sit here and do this calculation. It would be 6.7 minus 7.6 absolute values divided by 7.6 times 100. I got to sneeze. Excuse me. So let's see if I can do this calculation now. 6.7 minus 7.6 divided by 7.6 times 100. Uh, be 11. Ooh, I didn't do very good. 11.8 percent error on that steel rod. Now you should likewise. You should have a percent error for steel. You should have a percent error for the brass, aluminum, and the copper. Now the only other thing you had in table B, other than doing aluminum, copper, and brass, you should have had a red oak block. Now, let's take a look at that red oak block. To get the volume of the red oak block, you were supposed to measure length, width, and height. So if you want to find that volume, you ought to have a calculation that looks like this. Length times width times height. And that volume, 1.87 times 3.77 times 7.79. And I want to see this on the back side of a page in your lab book. I want to see this length, width, and height and where you multiplied it out. You may have done it in your head, but that's not going to serve my purpose. So for me, see if I can get this, uh, 1.87 times 3.77 times 7.79, 54.9. So I've got a 54.9 centimeter cube volume, and significant figure-wise, that's exactly what I need to write. So again, this calculation should be in your lab book. I'm going to go up here. My volume is 54.9 for that volume. Now, I need to also do a calculation. So I need to do a density for that red oak. So the density of the red oak would be mass over volume. For me, 42.69. over 54.9 so according to this my volume of red oak is 42.69 divided by 54.9 so I got 0.778 grams per centimeter cube and I should also have a percent error for that uh, red oak 0.778 for me minus it should have been 0 0.760 over 0 0.760 times that by 100 and I know this is irrelevant but I want to know 0 0.778 minus 0 0.760 divided by 0 0.760 times 100 I think I've vindicated myself for the bad one on the steel 2.37% so my percent error was 2.37%. So that's not too bad. So at this point, so I would have 0.778. I uh, had 11.8% error on that one. I had a 2.37 on this one. Of course, you need to have calculations for every one of these. If you have not got your actual densities yet, uh, there they are wrote down on here so you can always pause the video if you need those to finish this lab anyway I want to do one more look I want to do one more thing density of the unknown liquid so how are we going to do this density of an unknown liquid well first off I need to subtract my empty mass from my other mass so for me 71.5 minus 67.40 I promise I didn't cheat on these numbers they came out to the zeros and so I've got 4.10 grams for a mass. Now, for my unknown, density of my unknown 
And again, you should have all these calculations in your lab book. I know it's a ton of stuff. Density of the unknown should be the mass, which I got 4.10 grams, divided by my volume, which is 5.0 milliliters. 4.10 divided by 5.0, So my density come out to 0.82 grams per, I'm going to say centimeter cubed instead of milliliter. By the way, you're noticing I only use 5 milliliters in my lab. I tried to conserve uh, your lab. You should have used 10 milliliters of the unknown. But anyway, that would be the only difference. Your mass should be approximately double mine at least. We had the same unknown. Actually, we didn't have a the same unknown. Uh, the year I did this lab is different than the current year of 2013. But anyway, hey, 15 years of this, things change up a little bit. All right, so my density is 0.82. Now, this is the only one I don't have a percent error for, but I do have a question. What is the unknown liquid? Well, here's how I want you to find that. This is a book known as the CRC. Notice mine is 0.82. And I doubt you can read this book on the video, but you can in real life. My 0.82 hopefully matches up close to one of these densities in these two columns on here. For example, uh, acetone, 792, ethyl alcohol, 791, methyl alcohol, 0.810. 0.810 and minus 0.82. Well, I'm going to say that that is pretty dang close to what I've got. So I'm going to say that my unknown is methyl alcohol is actually what I'm going to put down on mine. All right. So what do I want in a conclusion for this lab? In conclusion for this lab, the things you should have for a conclusion... Well, I cannot write the letter N, apparently. But what I'm looking for, and my nose is running terrible. I want this. I want a density four. You should have one for the distilled water. Brass. Aluminum. Copper. Uh, steel. Red oak. And I also want, for each one of those, I want you to say a percent error. Uh, if you can figure out a way to summarize it so it's not repetitive, do not write a table. I want a paragraph. I want sentences for this. Uh, I also want, in your conclusion, I want you to say, like, I found, like me, I would say that I found my unknown to be 0.82 grams per centimeter cubed which I believe, which I believe, which I believe is methyl alcohol because its density is 0.81. And you might even said because I smelled of it and it smells like methyl alcohol or it smells like acetone. Again, I use different unknowns every year. But anyway, uh, sources of air... I'll go and tell you, you probably have a high percent error for steel, but that's because there's actually a lot of variance in the density of steel because there are a ton of different types of steel, so it's really hard for us to pinpoint what the density of ours was. But anyway, uh, overall, though, you should have pretty low percent error as your water, but you know how to ride the source of error at this time if you feel like you have somehow or another inflicted an injury in this lab. But anyway... That is everything for this lab. That's the calculations, how to finish up the data tables and everything. My wish for you is good luck. 14 minutes. Hey, not bad video. Uh, hasta luego, I reckon.